When we think about peacekeeping, it often seems like peacekeeping missions are failing. But if we look systematically across the record, most of the time, peacekeeping works. What I want to do today is to explain how peacekeepers do this. We have 16 peer-reviewed studies right now that all show the same thing. Peacekeepers save lives. They reduce the likelihood that civil wars will recur. They also help to achieve peace agreements. Where there's a promise of peacekeepers, we are more likely to see a peace agreement and peace agreements that stick. If we look at the completed missions since the end of the Cold War, two thirds of the time, peacekeepers have been successful at implementing their mandates and departing. That's not to say that in all of those cases, everything is perfect in the countries, but it is to say that they're no longer at war. This idea of using troops from lots of different countries, not to fight and win wars, but to help to keep the peace, was born during the peace negotiations in the Middle East in 1948. This idea was an innovation in human history. One of the main creators of UN peacekeeping is Dr. Ralph Bunch. Ralph Bunch was an American diplomat. For his work at the United Nations, he won the Nobel Peace Prize in 1950. He and others came up with this idea of peacekeeping, that what troops would do is they would deploy impartially so they would not take sides. They would deploy with the consent of the belligerents. So the belligerents would actually ask peacekeepers to help them implement peace agreements. Namibia is a country that has experienced tremendous hardship. It's had multiple colonial rulers. It's had a genocide. It's been victim of regional war, of civil war. But surprisingly, Namibia has not fallen victim to this tremendously difficult history. At the end of the Cold War, there was a complex and highly innovative UN peacekeeping mission, 40% women, and the main form of power they exercised was persuasion. Peacekeepers were there to help reform the political system. Nobody had ever voted in an election before. Peacekeepers were helping to inform citizens of their rights, of what it means to elect their own leaders. We are very proud. This is an important moment for us, but a historic moment for the Namibian people. That for the first time in 105 years, they are able to sit down, their leaders are able to sit down together and deliberate on the future of, of their country. In the complex missions in civil wars, peacekeepers are not only monitoring ceasefire lines, they are also helping to rebuild the basic institutions of the state. They're helping to demobilize troops. They help reform judicial systems, economic systems, so that when people have disputes, they don't have to resort to violence to resolve them. We know that there is a problem of sexual exploitation and abuse in peacekeeping. The UN has been taking measures to prevent peacekeepers from committing acts of sexual violence. Some people have been fired. Entire battalions have been sent home. We now have mechanisms to make sure that victims feel safe to report peacekeeper sexual abuse and exploitation. If we look at Lebanon as another example, the primary form of power that peacekeepers exercise and continue to exercise today is inducement. On one side of the border, we have the Israeli Defense Forces. 
On the other side of the blue line, we have Hezbollah and other armed actors. And in the midst of all this, we have thousands of UN peacekeepers. I, I have passion for mine action. One reason is to give confidence back to the community, the landowners, the stakeholders that yes, indeed, this area has been cleared. And if I can save one life, that means I succeeded. UN peacekeepers help to keep the peace, not because anyone fears them, but they do see the advantage of having UN peacekeepers inducing people to move toward peace. I've seen myself peacekeepers in action. For example, in Southern Lebanon, we often see peacekeepers patrolling on foot. They walk around the local communities. They visit the markets. They talk to people. They'll talk to the imam. They'll talk to other local leaders. They'll set up a medical clinic or provide dentistry services. They also provide a lot of employment in Southern Lebanon. If we look systematically across the cases, peacekeepers are helping people in their everyday lives move from a situation where there's war and violent conflict to a situation where there's more peace.